Marcellus, you confident your Clippers will even a series tonight? <laughs> of course I'm confident. You see this smile? Oh, it's sincere, man, because the cream rises to the top. Keep, keep rising to the top, go Clippers say. Whew, we doing it again, y'all. We did it last series, and I remember, yeah, Acho was up here. Oh, you know, he's from Dallas. Sometimes he loves Texas, sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> I don't know which take to take. But here's the thing. When they were down in that series, three games to two, and oh, two, the Clippers like to play with their food. You know why? Because mm -hmm. they want to know what the ingredients really are. Not only are what they're cooking up, but also what did you try to serve us? And when we saw the Dallas Mavericks, basically what they tried to serve us was a healthy dish. And it was all Luka and a little bit of some Hardaway Jr. Now we see this team coming and we're like, okay, what does Utah really have? Eh, a lot of Donovan Mitchell, a lot of Spider, and a little bit of that Rudy Gobert. Not enough to get us full. So the cream is rising to the top once again. PG is not a some star, Acho. He's an all-star. What we're going to do right now is continue the quest, which is Kawhi Leonard, last team, last two teams, to be down 0-2 in a series Kawhi's been a part of. You want to know how both of those series ended up? 4-2, 4-2. I call those uh -uh, grown man sweeps because we know a regular sweep is four games. Five games, gentlemen. Six one, grown man. Seven games, gangster. And that's what we're gonna do to them. <laughs> and then it's gonna be a smoothly paved road. Cause what's in front of us after this, hate to say it, gets a little easier. <laughs> so you warmed Sellers up. Sellers just came now. up with a new NBA dictionary. Hey, real like talk, Slick. He warmed up now because that was a good first lap. Um, I'm, I'm not confident. I want it to be. Remember, y'all, I bet my money with Marcellus on this series. I said, hey, I like the Clippers to win because Cell likes the Clippers to win. So that's where my head lies, but my heart don't necessarily lie there. Why am I not confident? Spidey Mitchell, first time in playoff history, no points in the first quarter. Still finished with 30 points oh. in the game, but no points in the first quarter. Mind you, Spidey Mitchell falls only behind, I want to say, AI, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and, and two other greats is like a top scorer of all time in the playoffs. And here he is having no points in the first quarter. I'm not convinced y'all can replicate by y'all the Clippers can replicate shutting him down. Mm. PG! Oh, uh -huh. right. Uh, PG-13. Apologize. Nah, he, nah. Apology! I will not. He proved he was an all-star for a game. For all of a game, he proved he was all of a star. Can he do it for all of a series? Shout out to you, PG. I tip my hat to you. The question is, though, Cell, that was his first 30-point game in the playoffs in roughly 11 games, if I am not mistaken. I need to see it more, maybe 10 games. Kawhi, he did his thing, too. But, Cell, everything went right. Murphy's Law. Oh, here we go. Anything that can go wrong will. Well, mm -hmm. anything that could go right did. And you all won by 25 or so points. I don't think everything's going to go right again for the Clippers. That's why I'm not confident that they will do it. I think mm. that they will do it. But there's a difference between a thought and confidence in said thought. That's where I am. Mm. I'm as confident as I've ever been about the Clippers <laughs> when it comes to winning game four. That's not saying much, though, because <laughs> since the bubble, my confidence has been waning in this team especially when it comes to their ability to replicate one great performance and follow it with another. That. All that said, the reasons that I feel confident are very solid and have everything to do about the matchups in this series. Marcellus, you started out by giving us an NBA dictionary and a new definition for the different stages of a, uh, a series, and I appreciate that. But you also neglected to mention one other star, and that's Jordan Clarkson, sixth man of the year, who was big in games one and two. And Ty Lu pulled another coaching trick in utilizing Terrence Mann, somebody who's played almost had no significant role in the first two games, put him on Clarkson, and that changed everything. Clarkson still scored 14 points, if I'm not mistaken, on 16 shots, but had a minus 24 in plus minus. And meanwhile, Terrence Mann had only scored seven points and had a plus 21. That gives you an indication of the defensive effect that he ultimately had. But here's the other element. It's Donovan Mitchell. You pointed out, Acho, that he didn't score in the first quarter. It's no accident that he re-injured that ankle at the end of game two and then had to sit the end of game three for the same reason. Donovan Mitchell did not look the same to me in game three from the very beginning. 
did not have the same type of explosion. Scored most of his points from three uh, from long range because he didn't have the ability to get the cup the same way. Give the Clippers some credit on that, but I believe that they were playing against a Donovan Mitchell, a different Donovan Mitchell, and I would ultimately expect that to continue. The one other element, and I, I, I don't like the fact that we keep looking at how Kawhi and Paul George are scoring and giving the, the uh, impression that their scoring is what really determines this team. Look at how many guys contributed to knocking down threes. Mm. The Clippers are at their best when those guys draw attention and move the ball and everybody's touching it. And that's what happened in game three. And it's contagious. The more success you have that way, the more you want to do it. They shot 52% from three-point range. And Marcus Morris, their best or most efficient three-point shooter, has yet to join the party. So, uh, look... I, as as good as everything went, I have no reason to expect that anything is going to be different in game four. Yeah, exactly, man. When we get Morris joining the party, it's over because let's talk about how crowded the party already is. Reggie Jackson, Batum, Kennard, 27 of 43 right now from three. 62.8%. Good and you know we're the best shooting team from the three-point line. Even in the conference semifinals, everyone keeps talking about the Phoenix Suns. Respect to them. But the Clippers still even have a higher percentage in this round. Also, fewest turnovers for any team going still in the playoffs versus the Jazz has the second most turnovers. I'm glad you brought up all the little things because it is the little things. Not only the issue and injury to Mitchell's ankle, but also... Acho, you got to respect the first and third quarters for what they really are. Those are coaches' quarters. That's when coach has the game plan. That's when we're going out there a little more scripted, a little more regimented, a little more disciplined. And when you see the Clippers locked in, they're a better team than the Utah Jazz. It's just that simple. So now we're a better team playing our style of ball, which is shoot the three and play some good defense. But more importantly, we got some family members joining the party. Uncle Mo. You know about Uncle Mo? Uncle Mo Minim is on our side right now. And when Uncle Mo is in the building, it feels bigger than it even is. We were down 0-2 in the Dallas series. Yeah, we had to go all the way to 7 with it. It was a gangster sweep. My, my apologies. But if you look at this series, down 0-2 again, and then one game, it feels like more than it is. Guess who's also feeling that? The Utah Jazz. They're like, oh, man. Are they about to pull off what they pulled off last series? That's the issue. We got Uncle Mo. We got all of our guys except you, Morris, joining the three-point party. We got our dynamic duo going out there playing Dino Mike. It's a wrap. I'm telling you, this one ain't going to be gangster. This one's going to be a grown man.